Look, it may take a while. I want to wait. There's a bench over there. I'll be back. What's going on, everybody? Lil Chris here, and our APA Pool League is finally back on in my area, and I have a match of mine that I'd like to share. In this matchup here, I'm going to be playing up against another skill level 7, so this is going to be a race to 5. And just like before, I'll have a cue ball diagram up above to show you where I'm hitting at on the cue ball, as well as provide some live commentary as to what I must have been thinking during the course of each rack. So sit back and enjoy, and let's see how this match goes. Alright, so for now, in our APA league, we're no longer lagging for the break. Instead, we're just doing a coin flip. And I had lost the coin flip, so this is my opponent breaking here. So let's see how this rack starts out. All right, so my opponent broke dry, so now you're going to get to see me come to the table and perform my normal routine of checking to see where every ball is on the table. That way I can decide what my opening set is as well as my opening shot. And I can tell you right now I'm going to start with solids here because first you're going to see me look at the one ball that you see I'm doing right here. But then I change my mind because I look at the five ball and I'm currently in a position where I can shoot the five ball into the side pocket rather than trying to play position from the one to the five. So from here, I try to shoot the five into the side pocket with some top spin to try to have the cue ball roll forward for position on the three ball. I just didn't hit it hard enough, and now I have to look up table, which fortunately, I'm able to see the four ball. The 10 ball does not block my path to the four ball, and I'm able to shoot it into the corner pocket. So what I'm going to do here is, with just a touch of bottom spin, I'm going to play a stop shot and try to hold the cue ball for position on the two ball. Now, what you're about to see here is something I normally do not like doing. You just saw me shoot a ball at one half of the table, and now I've gone up to the other half of the table. But because of where the eight ball is, I need to come back and try to deal with the one and three as soon as possible, which is what I'm going to try to do here. With some top right spin, I try to have the cue ball go off two rails here to come back down for position on the one or the three. But as you can see here, I hit it just a little too hard and I end up scratching. So now with ball in hand, what is my opponent going to do? Now, personally, I already like that my opponent chose the 12 ball the way that he did because that is a trouble ball being so close to that 10 ball there and playing position on it could be rather difficult. So using his ball in hand, he takes away that trouble spot immediately and then proceeds to try to run the table. So it looks like he's going to be playing the 14 ball into the side pocket. So he's held the cue ball. He's got position on the 11, the 15, or the 13. Looks like we're going to go for the 11 in the side pocket. I think he went a little lazy on that one. I don't think he wanted the cue ball to roll forward for the 13 ball, but that's okay. Stuns the cue ball over for position on the 9 ball. So it looks like his 15 ball is going to be his transition ball to get position on the 8. Whoops. So there it would have appeared that my opponent did not put any bottom spin on the cue ball. And so by the time the cue ball gets to that last ball, it starts to roll forward. And that's why after it hits the side rail, it starts to curve up the way that it did. And he misses the position that I think he was wanting. So it looks like he's going to call the bank on the eight ball to go into the side pocket. Just barely misses it, but almost makes it in the wrong pocket. So now I get to return back to the table with a wide open table here. It's just a matter of which order do I want to shoot these in. 
Both the seven ball and the six ball are actually rather difficult shots. I can try to cut the seven ball into the corner pocket, but it's a really thin cut shot. So controlling my cue ball could be an issue. And after scratching on my last shot, that concerns me. So therefore I don't choose shooting the seven ball. I don't bother with the six ball for the same reason. So this is why I go down to shoot the three ball, thinking that I can get the cue ball to come off of the short rail and then back up for position on the six. I just wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting my cue ball to run into the one ball the way that it did. And you can see I threw my hand up in frustration. So here, again, this is another thing that I normally do not like doing. I shot the three ball, and now I'm going to go back to the other half of the table to shoot the six ball and then the seven ball and then come back for position on the one and the eight. Normally, I would try to deal with the table in sections, but this table is not allowing me to do that. So sometimes there are exceptions to the rules that I usually try to play by or I should say the principles that I tried to play by. So you can see I was successful making the six ball into the corner pocket. Now with the seven ball, I'm gonna play this with some top left spin to get the cue ball to come around two rails for position on the one ball in the corner pocket. One, two. Just a little bit harder, I would have caught a third rail. And then here, it looks like I'm a little elevated, but I do have a touch of topspin, so that way the cue ball can kind of just roll forward and come back up off of the side rail so I can shoot the eight ball into the opposite corner pocket. There we go. And I take the first rack down one to zero and for anybody that's asking why are we not marking the pockets on the eight ball normally that is the rule that you're supposed to mark the pocket for the eight ball but at least here at our local league most of the high level skilled players just agree to call it now once we are going to cities or if we ever make it to nationals it doesn't matter what your skill level is you always should mark the pocket for the eight ball all right, so here we are with rack two. I'm currently leading one to zero. And I decided that for this season here, I'm going to only be trying to do eight ball breaks. So I'm going to be hitting the ball in the second row with some bottom spin and then a touch of right spin since I like to break on the left side of the table. That way I can try to get the cue ball to hit the side route and then come back and hit the rack again. And I'm always trying to look to see if I can get that eight ball to go into my right side pocket, though I have dropped it in other pockets before. Now, it's not always guaranteed, but what is guaranteed is that the eight ball does move out of the rack. So let's see how this rack goes. And you can see on that break there, the eight ball just came straight back, got kicked around a little bit, and it looks like I made a solid. I think I dropped the five ball, and I see that all seven stripes are still on the table, so I will be solids on this game. And instantly, right here at this end of the table, I can already see that my seven ball is going to be an issue. And so, like y'all have heard me say before, I always try to deal with trouble spots as soon as possible. And the way that I see that being done right now is to shoot the three ball into the side pocket and play position to be able to cut the six ball to my right, which automatically sends the cue ball to my left, hopefully breaking out the seven ball. So here I just roll the three ball in. And then now from here, I'm just going to try to stun the cue ball over to hit into the seven and hopefully put it out into the open. And I was successful. So from here, can y'all guess what the rest of my runout might be? Because from here, if you can see, I'm putting a little bit of bottom left on the cue ball so that I can pull the cue ball back for position on the four ball. Don't necessarily want to be jacked up over the 15 ball but it's actually okay because i can just shoot the four ball into the side pocket the cue ball is naturally going to roll down table for position on the one so 
So you should have guessed by now, the two ball is going to be my last ball that I use for position on the eight. When I shoot the one ball, I'm just gonna have the cue ball come off the short rail and then back up table to get position on the two. I have a little bit of left spin on this cue ball. And now I can just cut the two into the corner pocket and have the cue ball come off of the side rail and then back out so I can shoot the eight ball into the upper left corner pocket that I'm standing over. And there you have a break and run for this rack. So now I'm up two to zero and let's see how the third rack is gonna go. All right, let's see what kind of movement I can get out of the eight ball on this rack. So it looked like pretty much the same movement. It just comes straight up out of the rack. On this one, I did make both a solid and a stripe. I see that the five ball is gone and it looks like the 14 ball is gone. So I do have an open table. But if you look and see where the cue ball is at, it's more than likely that I'm going to choose stripes on this one. So really the only ball that I have to worry about is the 12 ball at the other half of the table. So I'm still going through my same routine though. I am checking out every ball on the table. And I'm gonna be starting with the 11 ball in the corner pocket. The three ball there near the corner pocket makes that pocket a little bit bigger. I can actually catch the side rail a little thick if I wanted to and still get that type of reaction and have the three ball help me. Now, because of what I mentioned with the 12 ball being trapped at the other end of the table, I am going to try to get there as soon as possible. You can see here I'm looking to see about playing position between those two windows there, but that's a small chance of me actually getting there from where I'm at right now. So when I look at this 10 ball and see what I can do with it, I can see that I can get position on the nine ball. And from that angle right there, I can try to play the nine ball into the side pocket, have the cue ball come off the side rail as I indicated, and then get position on the 12 ball. That at least was the plan. But the plan doesn't matter if I miss the shot. So you can see the angle that I have on the nine ball there, I can play the nine ball with some top spin, have the cue ball come off the side rail, and I would have been able to get position on the 12 ball, come back down table for the 13 and the 15, and then play the eight ball on either of the side pockets or in the lower right corner pocket. But now let's see what my opponent can do with solids. Starts off with the seven ball, has decent position for the three ball. Him tapping on the table like that tells me that he hit that ball a little too hard. It looks like he's okay though, it might be shooting at the four ball, okay. Looks like next he's shooting at the six. Should get automatic position for the two, which means he's gonna try to use the one ball to get position on the eight ball. Right here, he can just shoot the two ball into the corner pocket, have the cue ball come off the short rail. Well, I think he wanted to hit it a little bit harder than that. That way he can be a little bit closer to the one ball, but it does look like he can at least still see it. That was actually a really good shot. Looks like my opponent has position for the eight ball in the lower right corner pocket. All 
Oh, and he just missed it again. All right, so that'll bring me back to the table. Just like before, I have a wide open table. I have no issues. There are no more solids that could be used as obstacles. So I can tell you right here, the plan was to basically play a circle. So I start with the 10 ball, and then I wanted to have my position on the 15 ball, and then just complete a circle by getting the 15 to the 12, then to the 9, and then to the 13, and then to the 8. But the plan does go wrong. When I play this 15 ball, I don't actually get the angle that I want on the 12 ball so that I can get positioned on the 9. You'll see here when I play the 15 ball with top right spin, now I have a pretty sharp cut angle. So actually, it was the previous shot that I messed up. I should have gotten straighter on the 15 ball so that way I can get straighter on this 10 or on this 12 ball, and that would have been easier for me to get positioned on the 9 ball. But now I have to resort to getting positioned on the 13 ball, and then from the 13 ball to the 9 ball. So here I think I just gently play the 13 in. This is the same thing where I would have liked to have been a little straighter on the nine ball. I'm not worried about scratching in the side pocket with this shot here because I am just going to roll the nine into the corner pocket, which means my cue ball will roll forward past the side pocket, leaving me a small cut angle on the eight ball. Now, I actually hit that just a little too hard, so you can see if I hit it just a little bit harder, I could have had position for the eight ball in the upper left corner pocket. So now both shots, I think, are about as equal in difficulty to either cut it in the corner or cut it in the side pocket. I prefer the side pocket because the cue ball automatically tracks towards the short rail, and I don't necessarily have to worry about losing control of the cue ball. So I try to cut the eight ball into the side pocket. And I'm able to take that one down, and now I lead three to zero. All right. Now going into rack four with a 3-0 lead. Let's see what I can do with this break. Well, it looks like I got a little bit more movement out of the eight ball. I did lose control of my cue ball as it ends up behind the rack. Plus, I ended up with a dry break. So now with my opponent, let's see what their opening shot is going to be. Okay, it looks like he's sizing up for the 14 ball to go into the side pocket. Cue ball is naturally going to track towards the 9, 10, and the 15. I think I probably would have hit that shot maybe with a little bit more pace just to make sure that I separate them just a little bit more. But my opponent looks okay. He's got a free shot on the 12 ball and now has position on, I think, the 10 ball or the 15 ball. Now what I'm curious about though is what is my opponent going to do with their 13 ball being at the other end of the table? Plays the 15 in the side but loses control of the cue ball and scratches. So I'm willing to bet that they actually wanted to play the 15 in the side pocket and have the cue ball come off the short rail for position on the 13. Now that I'm back at the table with solids, if you look at the layout of the table, there is no issue with solids. The only issue I have is the 8 ball cluttered up next to the nine ball. So that's why you're going to see me place the cue ball here for position on the one ball, because I'm going to shoot the one ball into the corner pocket with some center left spin so I can have the cue ball come off of the side rail and into the eight and nine and try to separate them. And I was successful. Now, I actually don't know if the cue ball is going to end up where it ends up if I get a breakout because there's no guarantee that I'm going to clip the nine ball the way that I did. All I wanted to do was make sure that I run into either the eight or the nine just to separate them. 
but I was fairly confident that if I was successful, I'm going to have some sort of shot on any of these solids. Now what I try to do right here is to draw off the six ball to the side rail so I can have position on the two ball. But I wasn't expecting to clip the two ball the way that I did and knock it into the corner pocket. Because now all I have here is this really difficult cut shot on the seven ball. I'm really close to the seven ball. I have to cut it so thin just to be able for it to have a chance to go into that side pocket. I think I even get up and check it one more time. Now with this shot right here, I know that my cue ball is going to head towards the short rail. So with top right spin, I try to get the cue ball to come two rails back down table for position on the five ball. I got the position, but it doesn't matter since I missed my seven ball. So now my opponent's back at the table. They have a free shot on either the 10 ball or the 11 ball. Takes the 10 ball into the corner pocket, has automatic position for the nine ball. So it looks like my opponent wants to get position on the 11 ball next at such an angle so they can get position on the 13 ball. Now I'm curious, how many of y'all out there would try to get position on the 13 ball from the 9 instead and try to use the 11 ball as the last ball to the 8 ball? So he shoots the 11 ball, cue ball does not get the position that he wanted. So what do you think? Did he hit the cue ball too hard or not hard enough? Because if he hits it a little bit softer, he could play the 13 ball into the lower right corner pocket. If he hits it a little bit harder, he could play the 13 ball in the upper right corner pocket. But now he has to resort to a bank shot. Looks like he's going to bank it into the upper left corner pocket. And that was almost a really good attempt. But even if he would have made it, what could he possibly do with the 8 ball? Now I'm back at the table. So we can see here I'm sizing up for the seven ball. I actually wanted to just stop the cue ball for position on the four ball, but going back in retrospective, I should have shot the three ball. I was very well lined up for the three ball to go into the corner pocket and I could play from the three ball to the seven. But now from here, since I missed position on the four ball, I have to play the three ball. And I try to play this with some bottom spin so that I can get the cue ball to come behind the 13 ball and hit the short rail or hit the side rail. That way I can get position on the four ball. And I certainly was not expecting that a billiard off of the 13 ball would have the correct angle to go into the side pocket. I mean, because the 13 ball was so close to the rail. I clearly thought that even if I did hit the 13 ball, my cue ball would just hit the side rail and I'd still have position on my four ball. So now with ball in hand, my opponent shoots the 13 ball, gets decent position for the eight ball to go into the lower left corner pocket. And this time he was able to take it down. So, so much for a 5-0 victory for me to be able to win my team three points. We're now going into the fifth rack with me leading three to one, and it's my opponent's break. So now let's see what my opponent can do with their break now that the momentum has shifted to their favor. A very powerful head on hit, but nothing drops. So look at where the cue ball is at. How many of y'all have had this happen to you to where your opponent breaks dry and has a decent spread like this, but the cue ball is actually in a position where you can't really shoot at anything? Like all I have access to really are the solids that are in front of the cue ball. I can't back cut the three ball into the upper right corner pocket. The cut is just way too thin. And I can't really do anything with the four and the six ball. So here I am looking around, trying to figure out what I can possibly do. 
can't see any of the stripes. And the only thing I end up spotting is what you see here. I'm lining up the six ball to combo into the one ball and try to play the one ball into the corner pocket. I'm automatically on the rail, so I have some top spin on the cue ball. So all I want to do is just roll the cue ball forward, and I should have position on like the four ball. So I'm successful at making the combination shot. The cue ball rolls a little too far, and now what I'm looking at is a 7-3 combination. Because now, if I get this combo down, solids is fine. There's no more issues. So if I play the 7 ball into the 3 ball, I have the cue ball go into the 9 ball or even the side rail and then try to come back out for position on the 7 ball because I'm expecting a head-on hit from the 7 to the 3. So the 7 ball really shouldn't go anywhere. Just like that. Now the 7 ball moves out a little bit farther than I would have liked, but I can still back cut the 7 ball into the corner pocket. Then here I just gently try to roll it in. I think the cue ball automatically goes two rails by itself because of the cut angle. And I just hit that a little too hard. It would have been nice to have position on that five ball, but now I at least have to try to cut the two ball into the side pocket. So this is the same thing that since I'm so close to the side rail, I automatically have topspin on the cue ball as I cut the two ball into the side pocket and just have the cue ball roll up table and then back down. So now from here, I'm going to play the four ball into the upper right corner pocket. I believe I have some topspin with a touch of left spin. So I can get the cue ball to hit the short rail and then come back out for position on the five ball. But look, I was short on the position. I needed to hit it a little bit harder. You can see how my hands just come down onto the table like, ah. So now I have to play the six ball. And I play this six ball with so much bottom spin and a touch of left spin because I try to pull the cue ball back to play the five ball into the same corner pocket. I just get fortunate and clip it just like that. And now I have a natural angle to where I can shoot, shoot the five ball into the upper left corner pocket. The cue ball will naturally go into the short rail and then back out to have position on the eight ball. I play the eight ball into the upper right corner pocket. So even from a dry break and the cue ball being in a bad position, I studied the table enough and was able to find at least one shot that allowed me to still take advantage of the table. Now, fortunately, I did have one lucky shot. The way I clipped that five ball was luck because I did not want to actually do that. The five ball was supposed to go still into the same pocket as the six ball. But this is the way the game goes. And now I am on the hill going into the sixth rack four to one. All right, I'm on the hill now going into the sixth rack. Can I make the eight ball on the break? Oh, look at that. So freaking close. And that's actually the pocket I would expect the eight ball to be able to go when I'm striking the ball that's in the second row. So I think from here, it does look like I made a stripe. It's like all seven solids are on the table. So I will be stripes on this rack here. So I'm trying to remember, what did I do? Did I play the 11 in the side or did I play the 14 in the corner? It looks like the 11 ball in the side pocket. Yes. So now I can play the 12 ball. My only issue really is how my 10 ball is kind of covered by the six ball because I'd like to be able to play the 10 ball into the side pocket like you see here and then get position on the 14 ball. 
but I need to get position on the 14 ball in such a way to where it's easier for me to transition down to the 8 ball. So what I try to do here is stop the cue ball on the 12 ball. That little bit of movement there is okay. So what I really need to do is to be able to shoot the 14 ball into the side pocket at an angle that automatically takes me down towards the 8 ball. So you can see right there pretty much where I put my cue so that way I can have the cue ball go down table. But I have to make sure I don't hit that 6 because if I hit the 6 I'm going to lose the angle and then my cue ball will be going away from the 8 ball. All right, so I don't touch the six, but I fall short on the position. All right, I can make the 14 ball, right? That's not the issue. Look where the cue ball has to go for me to try to get position on the eight ball. You saw me point on the table where I actually wanted the cue ball to be because from that angle, I can force the cue ball into the side rail and with some right spin, have the cue ball spin back so I can shoot the eight ball into the lower left corner pocket. But now I have to have my cue ball go possibly three rails and avoid the one ball, the seven ball, and the six ball just so I can have position on the eight for the lower left corner pocket. So this is certainly not a position that I really want to be in because if I mess up here, my opponent has a wide open table, just like how he's left me wide open tables. So what you saw there was me trying to measure to see if I can get the cue ball to get close enough to the side rail and then come back to where I want to get behind the six ball. If I get behind the six ball and catch the side rail, then I should be able to catch the six ball and then get position. You can see I didn't catch the six ball at all. I actually hit in front of the six ball. So now I have no position on the eight ball. So what do y'all do here? Do y'all play some type of safety? Do you move the eight ball closer to a pocket? Because do y'all see what I'm measuring up? I'm calling the eight ball to go into the lower right corner pocket by doing a two rail bank shot. And as much as I would have loved to end the match on a shot like that, I just didn't even cut it enough. We can see that even if the one ball wasn't there, there was no way I was going to make the eight ball. So now I'm at a huge disadvantage here with my opponent having a wide open table. So my opponent's going to play the seven ball. Like he gently rolls forward and gets position on the six ball. So here he should be able to just slowly work his way down table and then just come back for the eight ball in either of the corner pockets. Okay, it looks like he wants to use maybe the one ball as the last ball. I'm not sure if I would have played that type of position. It's not like there's anything wrong with it. I just think I would have allowed the cue ball to just gently roll and play the three ball into the side pocket. And that way I can just roll the cue ball forward for position on the one ball. Again, there's nothing wrong with this position. He can stun off of the three ball to still play uh, position for the one in the side. Oh, but he undercut the ball and then leaves me a shot on the eight ball. All right, so can I close this out? Eight ball in the upper right corner pocket. Okay, 
and I was successful. I end up winning the match 5 to 1. And that's going to do it for today's video. Now, I can't begin to express how great it feels to be able to play pool out in public again rather than in my own garage, especially with our APA Pool League, because as time goes by, I'll be able to have more of my matches recorded and to be able to share them with you all in the near future. Now, let me know what you think of the format of how I'm doing these league matches now. Because in the past, I would just play the video with some music in the background and then provide voiceover commentary. Now I kind of feel like it's more like how I do my pool coaching lesson videos, except I'm not coaching myself. I'm just providing you commentary as to what I must have been thinking about during the course of the match. Do you like this format better or do you like the old format better? Let me know in the comment section below. And just like with my pool coaching videos, if you feel like there was some other option that I should have done or a different run out pattern, or maybe even for my opponent, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below with the timestamp of the shot and the other option, advice, or run up pattern that you would have given. So if you like what you saw, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.